In 2009, Kevin Ombaggio had just reconciled with his wife, had a beautiful baby girl and was the founder of a successful business, True Black. Everything in his life was going according to plan. That was until early 2010 when his body started giving him signs that all was not well. I'd been having these uh, like slight tremors on my hand uh, for a few weeks before then. And I remember sitting with my daughter and, you know, just showing her, see what daddy's hand is doing. And then I remember her, you know, trying to hold my hand, you know, to freeze my hand, so to speak. About three days later, I went into what you call a grand mal seizure, which is a full seizure, the one where, um, you know, like epileptic, but you know, you completely go into uh, the full shaking mode and then I blacked out. Doctors advised that he should go in for surgery to remove the non-cancerous brain tumor, which he did. What they do is something called a craniotomy, where they open up your brain and they go in and they do that. As a side effect, Kevin suffered partial paralysis on the left side of his body. After physiotherapy and heavy medication, he recovered, thinking and hoping that he would never be on an operating table again. A hunch would later negate such expectations. This is seven months down the road and I'm going in and uh, I have this, uh, this, um, this test and I go the next day to get my results, not expecting anything, in fact with a couple of my friends and I'm driving and I pick up my results and the only thing you know, that jumped out at me at that particular point was the size. It was actually bigger than what had been removed. That's the only way I knew that there was no mistake with a scan. The first time I went in and I did it because I didn't know, you know, like what to expect. So I dealt with the trauma during my healing period. So I just left my medication and then I was back in a situation where I had to go into surgery again. So I remember being afraid for the first time. For Kevin, the thought of another operation was too much, so he decided to research on possible options. All the while, he experienced seizures, tremors and blackouts because the tumour was putting pressure on his brain and he had to find a solution fast. In his research, Kevin found a non-invasive procedure that uses a machine called a CyberKnife. CyberKnife is a um, non-invasive procedure that is performed by a robot and uh, through radiotherapy they take imaging of the tumor in 3d in three dimensions and basically what they do is that they attack the the, the tumor from all directions you know uh, three dimension and the, the treatment is uh, administered in what they call fractions and um, my treatment involved five fractions which was basically the full dose of radiotherapy for the simple reason that the tumor had passed the recommended size. It seems that it was one problem after another for Kevin Ombajo. Only a few weeks after he returned from India, Kevin would find himself in hospital yet again. Unfortunately, after three months, I got um, what you call a pulmonary embolism. A pulmonary embolism is a blood clot that will start somewhere in your movie body probably in your legs and move up through your uh, vein system and come to to your to your artery to your to your heart or your lungs the blood clot had lodged itself in my lungs and had I not going to had I waited I was I went to hospital at four that's the only time I've ever been told had you come waited for daybreak you probably not have made it here all this time, Kevin went through his experience in private. Being a celebrity, rumors were rife about what was really going on in Kevin's life. Some blogs said that he was suffering from cancer and that there was no hope for him. In 2013, it happened again. But this time, instead of going through the experience in private, Kevin made his treatment process public to set the record straight. In the process, he ended up helping a number of people going through the same situation. Why is he talking about you know his his situation why is he is he you know getting some some satisfaction from the hype you know created around being sick the answer is yes absolutely 
I was getting a lot of satisfaction from the hype that was being created around my illness because in my inbox and through private contact, the number of people that I know have been able to help because of that situation. When life presents trials and tribulations, one has to prepare for the fact that there's some people who will stand by you and there's some people who will leave you. Kevin Ombajo had to learn this fact the hard way. You know, the second thing people think about is the whole money issue. Being sick is expensive. I have friends who, uh, and they'll be watching me, and they know, uh, supported me 100%, you know, right from the time uh, they got to know where, where I was. But then also have friends who felt I need to put as much distance as I can between myself and, you know, Mr. Sick. So, and that's life. And it's a reality of life. And it's a reality that a lot of sick people deal with every day. I'd rather say it, you know, because they'll relate to what it is that I'm saying. And that's just because if you're sick, then are you going to ask me for money tomorrow? Or, you know, am I going to deal with whatever? Or this guy might die. Should I really enter a partnership with him? If I enter a partnership with him, then I need to structure it in this way. So if he dies, I'm on top. You know, this is just life, you know, so. What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. When you meet me and you say, what's up, Kev? Say, I'm strong. That's my greeting. Mm -hmm. Big Kev is strong, Kev. Yeah. Thank I thank the Lord for that. Catherine Omwando for the Survivor Series.